Everything is in progress. Who wants to kick this off? I feel like doing it. Ready? Feel, oh, you don't want to. I feel like that's like your. I feel like that's like your job in these things. For like the kickoff, man. Get this fucking thing started. Cutting promos over here, like Randy Savage. And we're back. Go. Oh, and it, welcome. It, it, it's your thing, Derek. Oh, fantasy football. <laughs> All right, let's have, start again. Let's start again. I'll, I'll cut it up. Coming at you. Um, Hold on, Derek. D, just start again. Yeah. Make it stop. <laughs> and we are back and better than ever. Welcome to week three of the fantasy football recap for the Pinesty, Pinehurst Dynasty League. Ooh, it could be the Pinesty League. That's not bad. League, love it. (laughs) We've lost half of our viewership already, and we've just started. (laughs) There were only two to begin with. Yeah, you know, you know, Wallace is is going through this with a fine tooth comb to try to, you know, write a strongly worded email. Like, I did not agree with your take about doing so and so. (laughs) (laughs) My takes are fucking hot. Deal with it. They are hot. So. So we haven't done a video yet this year, so we wanted to uh, get one in here and get it published here before the game start. Um, So we got an action packed show for you this week. So let's uh, let's kick things off with, you know, our thoughts on week two. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I, I hadn't been really so engaged in, in fantasy and like scoreboard watching in, in quite some time. Um, that Monday night game I thought was, was pretty crazy. Basically. And I, I had, um, you know, always take a look, you know, at the scoreboard, you know, if you will, especially for Wallace, you know, um, and, and, and Dave actually. So I think probably the top two teams to, to look at and saw Andrew have a quite an amazing comeback with Aaron Jones. Really? I think he was down what? guys 70 points or something like that going into the into the game uh, yeah it's something like down that. 52 and right. he scored 120 points <laughs> on, on, was, it three guys? was it three guys yep yeah and banger. who who is that defensive player that he started let's go with devondre campbell linebacker devondre campbell yeah what did he do to get so many was he the pick six who is this guy I've not, I, I honestly have not heard of him. No, yeah, Big ten, showing ten. on Monday night, tackled 13, 10 solo, and an interception. Damn. And knocked down a pass. Damn. Crazy. So, Crazy. we all thought it was Aaron Jones that carried the water for him, but what a night. Holy cow. Yeah. Five. Yeah, there were some uh, special performances. You know, I'm going to go ahead and toot, toot my own horn there with my – our special boy and my king, King Henry. Ridiculous game. Ridiculous. Ridiculous second half. I like mean, college, it's like college numbers, dude. He had 35 carries. 35 carries for 182, three touchdowns, six catches for 55. So he had 40, think, he had 41 touches in the game. I think the key takeaway here is that Poodle oh. Pete has some real soul searching to do about what the puck is going on with that defense. I thought like, you know, starting oh, any for years, Lions might be the play, but it's starting to feel like anybody with a modestly functional offense could go off in the shootouts that Seattle's going to play all year. That defense sucks. Those games are fantasy gold. Walking fantasy gold, baby. Okay. It's, uh, it's interesting because Tennessee is probably favorite to, to win that division too. And they're just kind of plotting. Yeah. They're, they don't really look like, uh, you know, a deep playoff run team right now. No. I well, I mean, I guess this week is going to tell us a lot. They play Indianapolis this week and Indy can't go 0 3. So if Tennessee runs them into the ground, like they probably will. You know, they'll definitely be the favorites in that division, but whatever. That's yeah. the tallest midget division for sure in football. <laughs> Can't say that anymore. Oh, sh- you're the tallest little person. 
12 years later, this isn't someone's going to find this video and you're going to get fired from your job. <laughs> I don't have a job. Don't worry. He's self-employed, so he's going to have to fire himself. Yep. Which I would <laughs> like to do for underperformance. Let's uh, go. Uh, what are we doing next? So, you know, two through two weeks, you know, there's obviously still a long ways to go. Um, some, some teams started off hot, some teams not so much. So we're going to start off with the not so much category um, and talk about the 0-2 teams. So I have a little bit of background for 0-2 teams. All right. Here we go. You're going to love this. So six teams have gone 0-2 uh, in the last two years. So 2019, there were three teams. 2020, there were three teams. So of those six teams, D or Mike, how many made the playoffs? I'm going to say two. I'll say one. Derek is the winner. One team made the playoffs. So one out of six made the playoffs. And that was last year. Bossing. Derek, who actually made it all the way to the championship game and lost to Wallace. So a pretty special year. Um, made it all the way to the playoffs at a seven and six record though. So um, the combined records of these 0 and two teams that have started 0 and 2, 27 and 51 for a 346 winning percentage. So <clears throat> while you're not dead, if you're 0 and 2, you are nice. on life support, right? And uh, you know, I think as we go through these teams, some of them are kind of interesting, but uh, there's one that we can go ahead and send off to the glue factory and uh, I'll let D take the lead on this from there. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's a low chance of making the playoffs and um, you know, most teams only win. Uh, your average wins is about three and a half games if you start 0-2. So it is, life comes at you fast if you start 0-2. Yep. So that is that is some great some great research there by a research department. I really enjoyed those facts. <laughs> Don't check those numbers; they might all be lies. <laughs> <laughs> I made them up on the shitter this morning. Made nope. up, and the points don't matter. So, Look, I wrote them on a legal pad, so you know they're true. Yeah, that it is true. So I think uh, in the NFL, if you start zero and two, I think your chances of, of making the playoffs are something like you know ten percent, something yeah. like that. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, but 0 and 3 is even worse, obviously. Um, so, you know, this week there's a couple, couple 0 and 2 teams facing off. Um, but you can start off bad. Sometimes it, it takes a while to, to find your, you know, your starting lineup. Um, but I'll start off with my first 0 and 2 team, DJ Booga Sugar. Rebuild. Just pull the plug. It's looking a little rough. They are uh, um, yeah. all aboard the uh, Sean Watson 2020-something train. I don't know what they're doing there. <laughs> but So, like, Deshaun Watson, he's, like, not suspended, but he's not playing. He's still getting paid. He wants. He's to not going to play this year. He's not going to play. Oh, and yeah. I, I get keeping that roster spot because this is a dynasty league. Yeah. All right? I get that. Mm -hmm. um, but at that, you know, what I don't get – and I'm sorry, but I just, I can't. I can't keep my mouth shut anymore. I can't do it. I can't do it. What are we doing? You got four defensive ends on your roster. You got Le'Veon Bell. I, I mean, I, I get that they're searching. I get that they're searching, and I get that. But, but like, in, you know, the 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 roster construction just is, is nonsense. And, uh, you know, I mean, what's their activity been on the waiver wire? Like I hate to I hate to be the guy to fucking call them out and bark at them, but you know you've got pretty much the worst team in the league, and you spent ten bucks on the waiver wire so far. You know, now maybe they lost out on Andrew's all in push on on Elijah Mitchell, um, which was a monster. That was impressive. Yeah, that was way more than I thought somebody would spend, but um, you would think that they would be much more aggressive on startable guys out on the waiver wire, you know, um, oh, I, you yeah. know, get your fucking know. shit together. I love you, Danny and Joe. I, I this is a bad team. You know, I mean, I, I think this team as it currently is constructed is headed nowhere fast, but I think they've got the nuclear. I mean, if they're, 
you know, if they manage this properly here for the next couple of months, they've got a nucleus of productive players. There are guys who could emerge here. There are older guys on this roster who could be really good for the balance of this year. I mean, it may be time to swap some of those guys for people who are like, I don't know, young potential that are sitting on injured reserve for other franchises, dudes who are on other teams, taxi squads and stuff. I mean, I think it might be a little bit early to call, you know, time of death, but probably not by more than a week or two, to, you know, if they don't pull a rabbit out of the hat pretty soon, um, be interested to see if they're able to move into like a constructive rebuild mode by dealing some of the older, but, you know, fantasy relevant guys on this roster to try to build depth for the future. But yeah. Looking pretty rough right now. And I don't know. I mean, look, I, I actually kind of like that defense. Defensive end is a place where it can be hard to find productivity, and they've got three dudes that I would love to after. Yeah, but who do you pick, right? Like that's I, the thing is like if you matter. have four, like you're gonna get burnt. Like, like no, 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 last no, no. week they benched Aaron Donald. Like, what's know, the but, point of having Aaron Donald if you don't start Aaron Donald? What do you do? Yeah, I know, you know, I know. But, but it, it, again, they have trade. They have trade capital here where if they don't catch fire soon, I think they've got a lot of good assets, especially those like relatively young stud defensive ends that could fetch them a dude that's not going to contribute to a contender this year, but has long-term value. So yeah. and they've, my they've had some hard luck too. Like Clyde yeah. Edwards Hilaire. Yeah. I mean, swing and miss. nobody thought that he was going to be like, he might get benched. I mean, he might, he might get benched. Judy yeah. injury is huge for them. Sucks, Justin man. Jefferson and Mike man. Evans, you know, yeah. Robbie Anderson kind of being blah last week. So it's not like their team is a complete hot fire dumpster mess, but like I, that's the team I'm most concerned about. There was my say something nice about DJ Boga sugar <laughs> section. <laughs> I don't I, it, like when we, when we pitched this segment, I thought it was just going to be a dog pile. But actually, as I look at that roster, I, I think that that could be, you know, we thought they were a great team last year. Um, just missed the playoffs, if I remember correctly. And, you know, I don't think that that's a roster that can't be rebuilt if you go into remote, rebuild mode this year. I think there's some tradable assets there that can get young guys that could contribute for a long time to a real good nucleus. So. Yeah, but they're not going to make the playoffs. Not this year. <clears throat> Not okay, that. next up, Big Cat. Um, so next up, I would kind of probably lean for going worst to best. <clears throat> well, you know, I think it's, at least in my opinion, I think it's Sin City Mac attack. You're biased. He's, I know he's lower on the mortal enemies list, but you know he he has been a, re, a frequent flyer. He's the all these good players. He's he's not. It's like people like to the kill Browns Steelers rivalry, right? Yeah, he basically disappeared for twenty years because the Browns were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I I actually almost have Craig, and Billy, like even. Yep. You know, like both of them are okay. I kind of, I personally like Billy's team a little bit more just because he has a little bit more wide receiver depth and then he's got a superstar at tight end, right? Yep. But like Craig, like if you look at Craig's team, you know, right now James White is his top scoring running back and he's got Saquon Barkley, Ezekiel Elliott, and Antonio Gibson on his team. Like they once can't. those things start picking up, Craig's team is suddenly going to look a lot better. So – well, you know, it's unlikely that either one of these guys is going to dig out of the hole and make the playoffs. I wouldn't be surprised. They're, they're going to be like tough outs. And like it could happen, like especially if Craig's running back situation like starts materializing, like his team is could turn on a dime. And like this week's a good week for that. Like, you know, Zeke kills the Eagles. They got Eagles on Monday night in Dallas. Like Zeke's going to run for a million yards, hopefully. Although um, we'll talk about that on the, on the matchup, but I love that Zeke versus Pollard in the, uh, ah. on the oh. Craig versus bussing game. Love it. On them. But yeah, I mean, I see him as, as even almost, I think both of those teams are, are down on their luck a little bit, but not, not dead. I mean, I worry long-term for Bill's health at, at running back. I mean, mixing is like, he's old. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> assholes uh you know mixon is finally looking like he might be you know primed for the season everybody's projected for him since he came into the league um and sony michelle is a kind of savvy pickup I, I i like that and you know henderson certainly hasn't set the world on fire out of the gate and if they transition to michelle and 
the Rams figure it out to use that running back position like they have in the past. That's pretty nice. But man, owning Ronald Jones in a different league, pff, kill me now. Mark Ingram is old, and that is a bad Texans team. And Samaji, I didn't even realize P. Ryan was still alive. Cross him off. He's got a uniform and everything. Oh, cool. So, but uh, I mean, I do like the wide receivers, and that quarterback room is pretty hot right now. Um, mm-hmm. Well, we'll see about Burrow. Friend. We'll see. Yeah. So, Dave, do you have um, the Beaver Tamers as, as the second worst then? No, I have Dom as the best 0 and 2 team. Yeah, I do too. I, I think that he's just, uh, I, I, look, I look at his lineup and I just feel like he needs to have things shake out for him and get his starting crew set up and everything like that. You know, like I wouldn't be surprised to see Dom come out and score 260 points next week. You know, I think it's just about, he's just had a couple of rough weeks. Like he's the team that if you ask me to put money on who has a chance at being the playoffs, it's dumb. And it's dumb, like with a bullet out of these four teams. I think so. All right. Well, you know, I would say just uh, to finish up on, on Dom's team here, I have too many windows open. Yeah, I played him last week, and I was pretty nervous going in. Um, I think Justin Herbert hasn't really lived up to the uh, the lofty expectations that that were put on him. Um, I was I was talking to Dave, I think, on Call of Duty. Like Herbert has just been given nothing but praise by every you know national uh, broadcast, but. They haven't won a whole lot of games, you know, for all the, the hype that, that that guy gets. Yeah, but this is fantasy football. Yeah. I'm just saying I mean, in general. He's, he's been over here, – here's the thing with Herbert. You know, he's been over 300 – he has his first two weeks this season, 337 and 338 for his passing total. So the yards are there. He just doesn't have any touchdowns. He's only got two scores on the season, three interceptions. You know, he's still a young guy. He's going to throw picks. And last week – you know, he went for 338 against the Cowboys, which is not great, but he went for 337 against Washington, who, you know, that's a pretty good defense. So the touchdowns will come for Herbert. Um, and if they weapons. he can still fall back to Carr, who's, I mean, shockingly good. What good. the hell is going on? That good. <laughs> Although the Steelers are bad. Watch. Yes. It ain't going to get better. It's yeah. going to get worse. Um, anyway. So, yeah, I mean, like, I like Dom's team. I, I think that he's got good pieces. And, yeah, he's all but in. If you, on if, you look at his, if you look at his taxi squad, right, if he can exercise discipline and not activate those guys, if Bateman is who, you know, I mean, like, you think he is. But, I mean, you can say that about basically everybody except Hollywood Brown who's gone to play wide receiver for the Ravens, right? They've gotten a bunch of guys who are like, okay, this is finally the guy, and they all kind of just don't. Yeah, but that was Hollywood <laughs> Brown last year, and, <laughs> and now all of a sudden he's good. So, yeah. but I mean, Gainwell, you know, Gainwell, Trey Lance, I like that taxi squad too. I mean, I mean he's got upside. I like Gainwell because I have Miles Sanders. Gainwell for Dom, I, I don't know where he fits. I mean, um, oh, it fits on the taxi squad. Um, sure, but like he, if Miles Sanders doesn't get hurt, Kenny Gainwell's Boston Scott have fun, you know? see what happens next year i mean he'll be on that if he stays on the taxi squad mm-hmm. he'll be on the roster before the draft and he's got potential anyway um good team. yeah you know what i had to put a bow on on this i would probably put craig as the top zero and two team honestly yeah um, i think he, he has the most potential with that running back room that he's running, back. That running back room just hasn't hasn't produced and I, as long as they stay healthy i, I think they will um yeah but yeah, I, I would have those those three teams close, and and unfortunately, my boy Danny, my boy Joe, in a distant fourth. All right, so let's move on. Let's go. Um, well, better luck next year. <laughs> I coach, you didn't call my name. Uh, so little segment I'm calling Seven in Heaven. So we'll pick our top six playoff teams and then the last person who didn't make the cut. So um, you want to lead us off there, Big Cat? I think the easiest way to do it would just be to to run through each each list. 
So basically how I did it, I did it from, from the bottom up and the top three are going to be the three division winners. Um, so oh, I just took a, I a look at time to, to look at it. You don't have to do it that way, but that's just kind of how I did it. Maybe I accidentally did it that way. Hold on. So the, the way I'm looking at it right now, and obviously a lot can change, um, I think there's five teams right now that are kind of the, the clear contenders so far. Um, and then I think basically everyone else that we didn't just discuss are, are kind of um, in that, that second tier. So teams seven and six and seven were hard for me. Um, but right now I have Mapletron at seven just out of the playoffs. Um, and I have back nines matter at six in the last playoff spot. And that was quite frankly, a toss up between those two teams. And I just gave the edge to back nines matter because he's two and oh, um, <clears throat> his roster, like we talked about last year, isn't that great, but his defense and then the random person that, that scores a lot of points, uh, has been coming through, uh, for, uh, busing so far. Um, as far as Mike's team goes, you know, it's his, his running backs are, are kind of hit and miss and he's playing, you know, three or four of them every single week. Um, wide receivers stink too. And, you know, Adam Thielen is, is a touchdown machine. I, I've honestly, I haven't seen anything like it. Um, but you know, from there, uh, Mike, your defense yeah. is solid, but for whatever reason, Jeremy Chin was uh, one of my favorite players. I almost kept him last year. Yeah. He hasn't done anything so far. That, yeah. that, was, that was pretty surprising. And same thing's happening with Zach Cunningham, though, right? Yeah. I mean, he hasn't done shit, and he was so good last year. And, like, Christian Kirksey's getting all the tackles. Like, what the hell's going on? Well, we'll see. Chin, Chin, Chin gets uh, David He'll come back. or whatever tonight. I, I, I mean, I think he's going to regress up. Uh, to the mean here. A guy can't be this unproductive for the whole season. But, um, but yeah, no, I, I just, you know, I don't I don't see anything elite on that roster. And so I kind of worry for it. Yeah. So Jesse, who is a brick shit house, obviously. My uh, seven and six teams, I had it kind of the same way, D, when I was looking at this. I had a pretty easy time picking out the first five teams and six and seven. Um, you know, so I also have back nines matter as my number six team, my last guy in the playoffs uh, for much the same reasons. And then seven, um, I'm just tossing a dart out there that Dom is going to turn things around and be the second team to uh, go Owen to and make it. Uh, or I mean, he won't make it, but he'll, he'll be in it. I think he has a chance to get there. But, you know, more that I look at it, you know, if Craig or Billy or Dom win this week. I think either any any of those three could actually come and come and get it, um, but those were my I had seven Beaver Tamer six back nines matter. Nice. So um, the the next two that I got. So we'll leave the last. We'll do the last three or the first three, I should say. Uh, next, so four and five basically. Um, yeah. So four and five for me, it's it's kind of a virtual tie between. Uh, my brother, Bill Cosby, sleeper, sleepers, and uh, Team Traz. Um, <clears throat> Team Traz, we've been talking about it for the last year. You know, they kind of had some hard luck last year and still a really solid roster. And in year one. Yeah. Yeah, they've, you know, here, here's, a, here's a tidbit. Team Traz has started 0-2 in the first, last two years. So now they're off to a 2-0 start, which is uh, – that should sound some alarm bells because they've bounced back both years or last year they went six and seven after starting zero and two. So, I mean, they were in the playoff hunt. Yeah. And they've been a top scoring franchise, you know, every <clears throat> top four or top five. Top both half. I know they've been top half both years. Yeah. I think again, don't fact check me there. <laughs> so, you know, I think, um, what's going on here? I put so I had this two teams D, and I had Traz as my better of the two. I had Traz as the four spot, and uh, Bill Cosby sleepers in the five spot. But I, I agree, they're both good teams. Like they're both good teams. They put up a lot of points so far this year, and they have plenty of potential to uh, to sneak into the top three or win their division. So um, 
but that's how I had in my head. Um, Bill Cosby sleepers five, Team Traz four. Um, team Traz, you know, there's with if Tom Brady lasts this whole season, and he'll have a pretty good test this week against uh, the Rams, I believe. Um, but if if Tom Brady's scoring top five points every week or top five quarterback points every week, Traz is going to go. Uh, they're going to go a long way, I think. Yeah. yeah. Because they basically had a, an off week on everyone except for Brady and Chubb. Well, not an off week, but nothing crazy, you know, from all their other producers. And, and they still won, uh, even though they only scored 202 points. Yeah, that's a little bit of fool's gold. I mean, 202 points is not going to get the job done in this league this year. Um, but, hey, a win's a win, right, Mike? It's all you need. Yeah. Um, and then, so for, for Andrew, Bill Cosby sleepers, uh, obviously a nice 45 point performance from Aaron Jones. Um, but you know, looking forward, he has two quarterbacks to choose from. So he can either keep that going until 2023, (laughs) or he can, you know, trade one of those assets. Um, you know, he's got Michael Pittman on the bench. He's got Manny Sanders on the bench. You know, he's got two pretty decent tight ends on the bench. Um, so his team is, I'd say his team is the deepest out there. Um, you know, his, his running backs behind Aaron Jones though, obviously are, are pretty, pretty hit and miss. Um, so if Aaron Jones goes down, I think he'll have a problem. He might, might need to make one of those quarterback trades. Um, Yeah, maybe, but you know, I mean, he's got David Montgomery and Javante Williams. If Williams ends up taking a starting spot, which, you know, he'll be on the, the top end of a timeshare. You know, I don't think Melvin Gordon, barring injury, is going to be completely eliminated from that offense, or Mike's hoping not. But, um, I mean, his running backs are not that bad. But I agree with you, Derek, where he has a lot of good mid-range talent, but the high-end stuff he doesn't have. Mm -hmm. So what I would look at if I were him is to trade somebody with high-end talent, but not a lot of depth, you know, a two-for-one. Get a high-end guy, but put out two of your, you know, high mid-high guys. and that could help them a lot, but yeah, it's a good team. Good roster. All right. Maybe I, I won't go first this time. So uh, the three division winners, what do you, what, uh, Dave, what do you got for three, two, one, three, two, one. I got uh, Hulk hands to win the top, the top division. Uh, um, Joe, just his team is good, man. You know, I like Joe's team. I don't love Joe's team. Uh, but I like him. I think his running backs are tough. I have no idea why he's holding on to Gus Edwards. You know, uh, that's silly. You know, the guy is going to lose his job <laughs> next yep. year. You know, he's probably going to get cut, honestly, because Tyson Williams will be the backup and right. Dobbins will be back. Wonderful. So he's really wasting a spot there. Um, and I just bring that up because it was on a text string this morning, but um, there's your answer, Joe. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, I mean, Swift and I mean, Kamara's done crap, you know. Right. You know, yeah. so like once he gets going, you know, Joe's, Joe's got a good team. Um, but you know, I like the other two division winning teams better. Um, I have Diggs and Derry Sanders, obviously, as the other two top teams. With uh, you know, Derek and I splitting the um, the buy, um, and uh, Wallace being the third division winner. That's the way I see it, and you know my take on my team and obviously it's my team is my weakness is quarterback. Um, and you know, but on a one quarterback league, I, I can, I can get through that. I mean, Jameis had a garbage week last week and I still scored 258 points or something like that or 235 or something like that. So, you know, I got to get that figured out a little bit, but I think when I'm starting those running backs and Lockett and Deontay, it's just, you know, that's a lot, it's a lot to overcome, you know? So that's, that's why I just like my team. I just the running back depth and, you know, if that falls off the wagon, then my team falls off the wagon, but right now I got it going. So that's the way I see it. Like you got anything to add to those, the, the, uh, three. No, I mean, I, you know, I, I agree. I think Hulk hands is the most well-rounded in the Donald Ross division. And I just don't see a scenario where, either Bussing or I can like lock it together to really challenge him for that division. I think 
Andrew, if Green Bay stays smoking hot all year, right? If they, you know, just produce and week one was a total anomaly, he could be dangerous in the strands. But I'm not sure it's a foregone conclusion for Diggs and Derry Sanders versus Traz and Lord of the Slum. I, I like both of those rosters also. And if, you know, if they can kind of string together a couple of close wins or something, I think both of you guys could face more competition than you have in years past for the for the top of those two divisions. But those two teams, Traz and Lord of the Slum, I think are, are like very likely wild card teams from my perspective. And then, you know, it's kind of weird to of it, the years pass. Um, you know, I think that the Donald Ross has had, you know, at least one, if not multiple um wild card teams in the past and I, I think that over time we're not going to be able to smoke and mirrors our way into the you know into the playoffs I, I think that Hulk hands is the only representative of our division that makes it into the playoffs so I'd probably um, say he's the safest but the you know the safest bet to make the playoffs is a top three division winner but also probably the number three team I agree that the winners of Arnold and Palmer and Mike Strantz are probably the two by uh, teams but I, I would put those as pretty close races between the top two teams in each division. Yeah, but by that same logic, Mike, Joe might run roughshod through your division and have a great record. Like if me and the Traz boys and Andrew are all beaten up on each other all season, like that could be uh, eight and eight or, uh, you know, a nine and nine and eight division winning team because we're all, mm -hmm. beaten. you know, it's still well, yeah, the way the schedule the is the argument, you know, yeah, if all yeah. three the way teams that, are that good. Yeah. And the schedule, I mean, the way, the way the schedule works this year, right? Because of the 18 game schedule, right? I think mm -hmm. that you have two games against everybody in your division. So that's true. I mean, Hulk Hans has already beaten me and he, he may feast on a, uh, on the weak competition in dollar loss. That's a fair point, but I still have him as the third best team that, that makes the playoffs as a division winner. Yeah. BK. So, you know, honestly, again, it's, it's so early. Um, I put, uh, Hulk hands as the top division winner because you got the college football tiebreaker basically because you know he, he's the champ so um, you know Dave's team with those two running backs if they stay healthy that's going to cover up any other warts that he could possibly have on on his uh, roster uh, because they're they're so impossible to find right so yeah, that's why people are bidding $69 for backup running backs. Um, it's hard to find. Ask Craig, you know, he's got three, you know, RB1s and they're just not producing like RB1s. It's hard to find those guys. <clears throat> so, um, you know, if I had to put money on it, I would probably put Dave as the top team. Um, so I'll go ahead and slot him in second for, for all those reasons. Um, Quarterbacks, once the seasons get go season gets going, I think are a little easier to find and, and stream, if you will. Um, but that that roster is, is tough. Um, he could use some linebackers, though. Um, I don't know if starting two defensive ends is is going to be a good long term strategy. Um, my team starting off two and zero was a huge help to me um, because I have injuries already. Um, but if I can make it back to Michael Thomas and he just actually just shuts up and plays and, you know, gets nine catches for 80 yards every week, that would put me in a much better position. Um, Zach Cunningham, who I was counting on, is not doing so hot so far. Um, but, you know, again, that's going to come and go. I think he actually got benched last week for disciplinary reasons. I was just reading that. Uh, this week, he, I think he they didn't play him in the first quarter or something like that. So that team's a disaster. That's what's going to happen when you when you have players off a really bad team. You just never know what's going to happen. Um, you know, you can ask the Traz boys about uh, that Jets wide receiver last week who I was all about. Um, Corey Davis. Uh, Corey Davis. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Talk about disappearing act. Huh? And. Uh, uh, their quarterback throws four interceptions this is likely not going to be a good outcome that was hilarious. hilarious how does bill belichick do that every single time against rookie quarterbacks i don't know but you can take every it to the time. bank you take yeah it. it's you, a um, uh it's a wild wild thing but there was one point at which he had i think all of his incompletions were interceptions yeah 
and he had more in- interceptions than completions to his own team also. I think he was like one for three with two picks. Or was he like two – was he – yeah, something. It was some ridiculous. I sent it. I texted it out to the group. I, I forgot what it was, but it was ridiculous. Who who is the Jets coach right now? Is it a new coach? Yeah, it's Robert Sala, the defensive coordinator oh, yeah, from really uh, like San yeah. Fran. But uh, I don't know who's running that offense. But it's an. I mean, look, you got a rookie quarterback going against Belichick. Like, probably ain't gonna go well. No, yeah. I wouldn't draw too many conclusions. It just doesn't go well. <laughs> no. All right, you guys want to pick a pick a few games and get out of here? Yeah, I'll pick some games. All right. So first one up this week, week three matchups, we got Craig Darius, Tony V, back nines matter. Battle of the 0-2 versus 2-0. and What do you guys got? I got um, staying hot. I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna get it done. Yeah, I'm actually going against the grain on this one. I am uh, picking Craig to get off the schneid here and take down Brian. Um, you guys know that I love harping on Brian's team being a fucking fraud. And I'm going back to the well one more time. I just think I think Craig's running backs could go off this week. Zeke versus Philly is always good. Barkley had like 50% of the workload in week one. And I think he had 85% last week and Atlanta stinks. So like you could see a Derrick Henry type of game from one of those two. Um, and like, you know, if those two guys combine to put up 80 points or something, that's going to be hard to overcome. So I like Craig here. Go get him, buddy. Yep. Yeah, I'll just say that like this is, this is the uh, Fisher cut bait week for Craig, and I'm afraid it might be cut bait. I mean, I, I don't think Antonio Gibson gets off the mat this week against Washington. I mean, against Buffalo, rather. And if Saquon and Zeke don't both eat, then it's all fucking four alarm fire on those two guys because these are as good a matchup as those guys can ask for, I think. But we'll see. One other thing on that with Craig, why I like him, is A.J. Brown. So A.J. Brown kind of plays the slot in Tennessee. Slot receivers have been – just crushing the goals. Roasting Indianapolis defenses. You got that Cooper Cup game in week one who went for a million yards and then Tyler Lockett last week. So if that holds true, A.J. Brown should go nuts this week too. So that's why th- – those are my big three reasons for liking Craig here. And yeah. also just I like to pick against Brian. <laughs> <laughs> we do – I mean, just as the lineup stand now, we do have the Pollard versus Zeke. And if, oh, yeah. if, out on, if Bussing comes out like – to the good on that, then I think that's a, a problem for Craig Darius. Yeah, somebody's going to find Craig hanging from a fucking curtain rod in his closet. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he he does like to keep things upbeat. So even if yeah. he's <laughs> poetry, I'm sure it won't be a problem. Mr. Sunshine up there, Craig Darius, Tony. Glass half full. Yeah, always. That's your call. Everyone has fun. <laughs> call Big Cat. Big Cat, where are you going on this one? I'm, I'm, taking, I'm taking Craig as well. Uh, okay. Really, just more of the you know the matchups are definitely favorable for Craig, um, but you know, kind of the uh, return to the mean, if you will. Um, I think Craig gets off the Schneid as well. Uh, next game, Lord of the Slum v Maple Tron. Uh, we haven't talked about um, Mikey Mikey Goldberg's team too much uh, in this, so he won he he won top points, I believe, in the first week. And then came in dead fucking last in the second week, Mm -hmm. Um, which is, you know, pretty much how fantasy football goes. Um, You know, I'm actually going to have to pick um, Mike Smith in this matchup. Um, Mike Goldberg's team is, it has a lot of good players, but there's also a lot of, you know, uh, you know, home runs or a strikeout potential on a lot of his starters. Um, and you, you saw home runs in the first week and you saw strikeouts in the second week. Um, I think as the season moves on, you know, he's, he's got, he doesn't really have a true, you know, stud wide receiver. His tight ends are questionable. His linebackers are questionable. And Jamal Adams, who I wanted to draft, um, just hasn't been scoring so far. Um, I don't know if that scheme or they're trying to keep him healthy or, or what the deal is, but, you know, not really a difference maker uh, like they thought he was going to be. Um, so I'm going to take Mike in this one. 
Um, but you just a cop out. It's the Mike Bowl. Yep. <laughs> what do you right. Yeah, I'm on Mapletron also for much of the same reasons. I like Mike Smith here. I'm yeah, I hate picking myself, but I'm going to do it this this go round. And I kind of have same kind of concerns about my shitty running backs. Like these guys are going to have to produce against those lousy. I mean, all of my running backs have favorable matchups this week. If it doesn't work out this week, it's going to be a long fucking season. And you know, I'm keeping Claypool stubbornly in the starting lineup, but that Pittsburgh passing game looks like shit on fire. And you shouldn't put it out with your boot, Ed. But don't tell me my business, devil woman. Not good. Not good in Pittsburgh. <laughs> All right. Uh, Bill Cosby sleepers versus DJ Booga Sugar. I'm going to take Andrew on this one. <laughs> <laughs> all right been 20 minutes at the beginning of the show shitting all over danny and joey yeah i'm with you man i'm sorry i got it. i'm all on andrew we've been through I, both I, of these rosters and I, I i don't think there's an argument to be made no. yeah um i agree and i just word of the wise on booger sugar i mean swing for the fences with daniel jones getting a crack at atlanta's defense because sweaty teddy isn't going to score you enough against the jets to like close the gap on josh allen dude what agree you, daniel jones sweaty leading, teddy, dude. leading rusher on your new york football giants daniel Come jones on. so like it's a First legit chips in. yeah I was actually hoping they cut Daniel Jones instead of Matt Ryan for some crazy reason. I know they're New York guys, so I knew they weren't going to do it. But if they did, I would have jumped on Daniel Jones like stink on shit. So yeah, no, I'd be all like a fucking Matt fucking Ryan. That's a rough one there. Yeah. All right. All um, right. Uh, game of the week part one is going to be Team Traz versus Hulk Hand. Holy shit. That's a that's a powerhouse. <laughs> That's a banger. That's a good one. Yes. I guess I, I'll, I'll start. I'm going to start. I got to digest this one. Go What's ahead. That? So, yeah, I'm going to take all cans. Again, uh, Traz, the Traz boys, they, they only scored 202 points last week. You know, Wallace gave his team a, a stern talking to after that week. Too. <laughs> uh, Embarrassment, yeah. really. It was an embarrassment on, on Monday night in front of the whole country. Um, Everybody's watching. <laughs> huge ratings. Um, so, yeah, but honestly, the, the matchups this week definitely favor Hulk hands. Um, I would expect Kamara to have a big week. Um, Swift versus Baltimore in garbage time. That's probably going to be a big number. And Tyreek Hill hasn't blown up yet. He's probably going to do it this week. Um, same with Metcalf, although Metcalf is kind of banged up already. Um, uh, Tyreek had a ridiculous week one. He just didn't yeah. do shit last week. Oh, yeah. He had that one. He uh, had 197 and one. I mean, he has – the guy one has, was, he's got 47 points on the week and scored 41.1 in the first week. So yeah. he just didn't do shit last week. And they were bracketing him. I mean, the, the television coverage just showed – I don't think he ran a route where he wasn't bracketed. Yeah. over coverage and and a guy underneath it was just that was a two men committed to one guy all game game script yeah and i also like alan robinson to break out a little bit with fields yeah. at quarterback so i'm with you on hulk hands here i mean i love the Traz boys and i know we kind of stroked yeah. them off earlier in the pod but like they're starting two jets wide receivers against denver's defense like thank you yeah, no, I, mean, I, I, I actually love both of these teams, but uh, the J.D. McKissick and Jameson Crowder starts are the two that that push me to Hulk Hans because Hulk Hans doesn't have a single start that I wouldn't like absolutely die for. Um, yeah, and, Joe's team is looking hot this week. Yeah, I, I could live without McKissick and Crowder in any lineup ever again. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at, you know, their alternatives on the bench. And maybe this is the deal with the Traz team. It's it's just not deep enough. With I, I, I don't know why Boyd is down there. Pittsburgh sucks, but uh, whatever. We'll see what happens. I got whole cans too. Okay. All right. Last got, one. Uh, game of the week, part two. Hold on. We skipped over the Beaver Tamer, Billy Mack, oh, bowling, wow. the loser bowl. Yeah. <laughs> loser bowl. Game of the week, part two. Really Who game. gets off the map? Ugh. Well, yeah, I, I, I'll go first on this one. I got Dom getting off the mat here. 
Um, you know, he's my favorite Owen two team. So I guess it shouldn't come as any surprise, but I, I got Dom getting off the mat here. Um, you know, I, I think that the Herbert, uh, the, the, the charger connection against Kansas city is going to be able to produce, um, you know, Juju should have a good game against Cincinnati. Um, I love, I love Mike Williams. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, I'm, I'm on Dom this week. Wouldn't be surprised either way, I guess, but I, I like Dom better than Billy this week. I yeah. am going to say the same, though this is a virtual coin flip. I think there are okay matchups on both sides and similar issues with both teams as far as matchups. I'm, I'm going to go Beaver Tamers, but just by a really <clears throat> margin. You know, I don't know if it's the best strategy to have three chargers, you know, in your starting lineup. You got Herbert and Allen and Williams. So that's either going to be really good or really bad. Yeah, but I mean, you know that they're going to have to chuck it all over the place to keep up with the Chiefs. I mean, I'll be surprised if that's not a game that goes over 55. Yeah, but this is also a lineup that like one week Dom's going to score like 100 million. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kind of like Andrew did last week, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, God yeah. forbid the Chargers play uh, Detroit. Dominic will be unstoppable that week. Maybe. Because the Hello Kitties don't play defense. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now the real game of the week, the one that everybody came here to see. Mm-hmm. Who gives a shit, Bola? Commissioner on Commissioner Violence. <laughs> That's right. So, Mike Smith, why don't you take the lead on this one? We got Derry Sanders and Can You Digs It facing off in the battle of the not only the top, uh, two and O teams, but I think the top two scoring teams in the league, right? Thus far, I think that's right. Yeah. yeah. So I want to immediately pick Can You Digs It because Matt Ryan versus Kyler Murray, just what a running head start Big Cat gets out of the gate. But then Christian McCaffrey gets. Houston's defense, my God. And um, let's see. Uh, I am going to say that the wide receivers are going to carry the day for digs. I think that's a roll of the dice, maybe chasing last week's <clears throat> points with Rondale Moore. Uh, it was number four pass catching target in that offense. But uh, boy, if he goes off against what is arguably like one of the historically bad defenses in Jacksonville in the NFL history. Um, I I think he's got enough favorable matchups. He's going to survive your running back um, blitz and, and I'm picking digs, but man, your running back matchups. Awesome. Not bad. Not bad. Big cat. You want to comment or do you want me to go? Yeah, go ahead. All right. I'm going to win. Any questions? (laughs) So, Look, look, Matt Ryan, agree. It's disgusting. But he did go over, he went 302 touchdowns last week against Tampa. I trust that you were watching. The Giants just gave up like 330 and whatever to Taylor Heineke. Heineke. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying like he's a great starter or anything, but I think he's serviceable this week. You know, McCaffrey, Henry, Miles Sanders should have a good game against Dallas. You know, Gaskin against the Raiders. You know, he's the pass catcher and the starter. I mean, it's hard to love Gaskin, but for a fourth running back out the He's gate, fourth running back, yeah, that ain't so bad. Um, yep. You know, I'm still kind of futzing around what to do with my wide receivers. If Antonio Brown comes off the COVID list, then maybe Cook goes back to the bench, but maybe Cook's a good start because it should be a high-scoring affair with Kansas City. So I'm still in between there. And then, um, you know, I think it'll be a close game. You know, I'd be a pussy hey. if I pick myself. So I mean, I, I think that. Um, you know, we'll see. I mean, we've both been destroying Burn. it the last two weeks. I mean, yeah, and, and I mean, the points. Burn, Burns could have a yeah enormous game tonight. I, I mean, think. I could literally, I could go into to to Friday morning with legit seventy five points on the board. Yeah. Burns gets a couple sacks. Christian McCaffrey, McCaffrey of course, is twenty five or thirty. You know, we could, I could have fifty or sixty points on the board going into tomorrow. Like, good start. Yeah, it, it's possible. Or I could also have like eleven, and then yeah, I'm definitely doomed. <laughs> we'll know a lot this evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's pretty funny actually, because uh, my eye went right to Brian Burns as well. Um, and I also got Kirksey going tonight too. Who, you know, I know he's old. And he is old, but I mean, 
you know, he's he's got he's been averaging 22 points a week. Of course, this will be the week that that Cunningham goes off for tackles and Kirksey twists his ankle in the first play, but whatever. Yeah, so that's that's exactly that's going to be the swing there. So I see this being a low scoring game, just, uh, you know, regression to the mean since we've both been killing it. Um, Christian Kirksey versus Zach Cunningham. That's going to be the difference maker this week. You heard it's going to be like so fun to watch the game tonight because even though it's a shit game, we have like a lot going on it, you know, you really do. So, you know, uh, T Higgins didn't get in my starting lineup because I I didn't set it. It was the automatic. Um, I think T Higgins is playing. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's one that like, you know, I think that there's a thinking that you can do on the Rondale Moore versus T Higgins piece. Um, but it's the same decision for me every week so far. It's basically Singletary versus Rondell Moore versus Galladay. Um, I think Galladay finally does something this week. So I agree I would, with that. Um, Didn't so, he have like a sideline meltdown on Sunday? Or yeah, he was barking at Jason Campbell. Yeah, but yeah. I, I agree. I think Galladay's a hundred percent a start this week. I think that you're looking between Singletary and T Higgins. And Singletary, while he's been doing a very good job of getting almost all the work, like it ain't that easy to run on Washington. Right. So maybe the play there is to take the swing for T. Higgins and just assume that the Steelers are going to be ineffective at stopping the pass for the third straight week. Mm-hmm. Well, no, second straight week. And do we know what, what T.J. Watt's status is? Not yet. Because that's game-changing if he doesn't play. Burroughs should be able to just pick apart the Steelers' defense. I heard he was not playing. Uh, that's my understanding as well. Well, <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> Spencer Rattler in a Steelers uniform. How's that sound to anybody? Do we just close this down by talking about why Why did the Steelers bring back Ben Roethlisberger? Well, you did not bring back your guy. And then, like, who's the, who else? That's what the question, I guess, do? is yeah, who I else were you going to start? I think – you know they that they made a play for one of those. Um, they don't have the cap space. Yeah, I guess no. they don't have the cap space to make a run at a serious like. I thought they were going to go after the guy who was ended up in um, from the Jets who went to Carolina. Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold couldn't 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 pick up that contract. Yeah, I think that there was. Uh, it would have been a nice fit. I agree, but no, they couldn't make it work. Because yeah, they're I mean, basically just delaying the rebuild by a year by doing that. Well, but yeah. maybe they're – I mean, if they're as bad as they've looked for the first two weeks, then they could get it done without making trades in the draft. Yeah, they should be – They, I think that they'll be picking in the top ten next year, uh, which should get them somebody that's good. But, like, still, it's. I mean, you could end up with – I mean, I know it's a little early to pull the plug, but, like, you know, Zach Wilson not looking so good, you know? I mean – yeah. Yeah, it's just like, you know, you got to bring back Ben because you can't roll Mason Rudolph. You know what Mason Rudolph is. You saw that last year. He's not good enough to win in the NFL. And then, like, you pick up Dwayne. Haskins, yeah. Who, like, yeah. I not know. a good football player. It'd be but, a good you know, story if he pulled it together, but I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, just to spitball a little bit, though, I mean, presumably if things go the way um, John Lynch thinks they're going to go right. Jimmy Garoppolo's available next year. Now that's not going to win you a whole, you know, like Garoppolo's not going to win it by I'd himself, take Jimmy G. but I'd take Jimmy G in a heartbeat, right. With Claypool and Deontay and Juju and whatever else. Right. And they'll yeah, draft another or, or be able to develop another, you know, elite ish wide receiver. You've got a lot of potential. So, I mean, you rebuild the offensive line with some kind of, dealing some guys as you go down the tubes this year and maybe you can use some you know kind of cap space to get a jimmy g um it gets more interesting or you know you totally tank out and you pick up you know jack Cohn, draft jack Cohn. yeah i mean <laughs> you, well no because he can't play behind this offensive line any better than he can the <laughs> shitty line uh, so of course there there are there are solutions but but it's not a require that this year go badly and they're off to a bad start so yeah, I mean, you got to have – at some point, you have to burn it down. The Steelers haven't burned it down. I mean, Tomlin's never had a losing season, you know, and, and there's a lot of things you can say about him as a coach, but, like, that's impressive. Um, well, but he, he, in order he to get together. a great player, you have to burn it down at some point. 
That's right. And he held together the crazy train with Antonio Brown and Lev Bell in the same locker room for a couple of years. So, I mean, he, he deserves credit, but he's been there long enough. I don't think he's the coach to like s- suffer through a rebuild. And that's where they're headed, man. Like on the fact. Yeah. I mean, Hey, look, if I'm, I'm, I'm fine with him as a coach, um, you know, because also it's the old question of like, well, okay, who, who are you getting? You know, you getting like Zach Taylor or, David Cully or, you know, like who are the fucking new coaches this year that you're actually excited about? I don't know. You can have Mark. Basically you have to take a swing at a, an assistant and, you know, the hit rate on that's like one in three. I was going to say, what is that? Like one in 50, 50 at best, but probably worse. You're going to get a new head coach to groom, a, you know, first time starting quarterback or something. It could be really pretty ugly. So. Yeah, we'll see. we'll see. Shouldn't be pretty. I'm sure the Browns. I don't think that's what anybody tuned in to hear projections for the Steelers' future, though. So maybe yeah. we'll this segment short. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Cleveland, all the Cleveland guys will have fun dancing on our graves this year. So yeah. yeah. Hasn't been hasn't started off too well. Hopefully we don't have a jersey that has the 14 or 15 starters names crossed off, starting with Tim Couch. I don't think that we I don't think that'll happen. But you can, uh, if I beat Smitty this week, you can count on me showing up on the next broadcast in a Kyler Murray jersey because I'm definitely going to buy one. <laughs> Thank you a lot. I'm going to buy Matt Ryan if I win. That's a lie. I will not do that. <laughs> got to be a game authentic jersey. This I got to get, I mean, if Derek Henry, I, 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 the fact that I don't have a Derek Henry or a CMC jersey yet, I mean, maybe I'll just go up and change the name on the, uh, Adrian Peterson one I got a year ago. So that got me a championship. It did. Yeah. All right, boys. Any final thoughts? This is running too long. Let's get off the fucking. Yeah. I'm hungry. <laughs> so am I. All right. <laughs> Lunchtime well, here. Well, good little... luck in the games. It's a beautiful day in Houston to play under a dome. Um, hopefully, <laughs> it'll be a good game tonight for those of you who have Carolina Panthers. Big game tonight, Big Cat. We'll be watching. All right. Love you guys. Nice to see you, boys. Good luck, everybody.